Welcome to our crash course, learn Python in 15 minutes. Whether you're a complete beginner or looking to brush up on your Python skills, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll cover the fundamental concepts of Python programming, giving you a solid foundation to kickstart your coding journey. We'll dive into essential topics like the infamous print statement for displaying output, the versatility of functions to organize your code efficiently, and explore the power of strings with their array of functions. But that's not all. We'll also unravel the mysteries of lists and tuples, two indispensable data structures in Python. Then, we'll journey through control flow with the iconic for and while loops, understanding how they iterate through data and execute code blocks. And of course, we can't forget about the if statement, your key to decision making within your programs. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid grasp of these core concepts, setting you on the path to Python proficiency. So, let's dive in and master Python in just 15 minutes. Requirements to run Python on your computer or laptop Python Interpreter You need to install the Python Interpreter on your computer. You can download the installer from the official Python website, python.org slash downloads and follow the installation instructions appropriate for your operating system. You can also watch my video about how to install Python on your computer. I have given the link in the description. Operating System Python is available for various operating systems including Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Ensure that your computer's operating system is compatible with the version of Python you are installing. For Windows, you need minimum of Windows 10 to install Python on your computer. Text Editor or Integrated Development Environment IDE, while not strictly necessary, Having a text editor or an IDE specifically designed for coding in Python can greatly enhance your programming experience. Some popular choices include Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, Sublime Text, and Atom. Also you can learn Python coding by going to Programmy's online Python compiler to achieve the same task. You can find the link in the description. The print statement in Python is a built-in function used to display text or variables to the standard output device, usually the console or screen. It can be used to print simple messages or values stored in variables. Text enclosed within double quotes will be printed exactly as written. To print the values stored inside variables, just put the variable names inside print statement without parenthesis. Python arithmetic operators are used to perform math calculations like addition, multiplication, or subtraction. For example if you want to add two values then you can use plus sign or minus sign to subtract, asterisk sign to multiply and slash sign to divide. You can also use variables to do math in Python. This means you can store numbers in variables and then use these variables to do your math calculations. The Python input function is used to receive input from the user while a program is running. When you use input, the program pauses and waits for the user to type something in. Once the user enters the input and presses enter, the program continues execution. And you can store the input in a variable for further processing. Here is an example. In this code, 
we're using a variable called name to hold the name the user gives us. Then, we're using the print function to show the name the user entered. Every time this code runs, it asks the user to type something in. Whatever the user types gets stored in the name variable. You can use this name anywhere else in your program because it's saved in a variable. We can also get input in the form of numbers, integers or floats, or text. And of course, we can use these values stored in variables with the print function to get the results we want. A Python function is a block of reusable code that performs a specific task. Functions allow you to break down your code into smaller, manageable pieces, making it easier to read, understand, and maintain. Functions in Python are defined using the def keyword followed by the function name, parameters, if any, and a colon. The body of the function is contains the code to be executed when the function is called. Here's a simple Python function that prints a greeting message whenever it's called. When you call greeting, it will print hello. Welcome to Python. You can call this function anytime you want to greet the user or display a welcome message in your program. In Python, conditional operators help us compare values and figure out if given condition is true or false. For example, let's say we have a variable called marks. We want to see if the value of marks is more than 50. We can use conditional operators to find out. The greater than sign checks if the value of marks is more than 50. If it is, it returns true. If we change the value of marks to 40, it will return false because 40 isn't more than 50. But if we set marks to 50, it still returns false because the condition checks if the value is greater than 50. If we want to include 50 as true, we can use the greater than or equal to sign. Then, if marks is 50 or more, it returns true. We can also use the less than sign to check if the value is less than 50. Using double equal to checks if the value is exactly equal to something. If we want to see if it's not equal to something, we use the not equal to sign. These symbols help us compare values and conditions in Python to make decisions in our programs. The if statement is a fundamental control structure in programming used to make decisions based on certain conditions. It allows the program to execute specific code blocks if a specified condition is true. In simpler terms, the if statement evaluates whether a condition is met, and if it is, it executes a block of code associated with that condition. If the condition is not met, the program can proceed to other statements or execute alternative code blocks. Let's say we have a variable called marks, 
we will check if the value of marks exceeds to 80, the statement returns, you got a 1 grade. We can associate more than one print statements if the condition is true. And if the value of the marks is greater than or equal to 70 then it will return you got a grade. And if the value of the marks is greater than 50 then it will return you got B grade. In any other case where the marks are less than 50, the statement returns, sorry, you have failed. This structure covers all scenarios based on the value of marks. We can also add the input function to input the value of the variable marks and the if statement will return the grade after checking all the conditions. If you have to write down numbers from 1 to 10 or 100 by hand, it takes a lot of time. You have to use the print statement on several line with specific number to achieve the desired results. But Python helps us save time with something called a while loop. A while loop is a way to repeat a task based on a condition. It's like a shortcut that helps us solve many problems easily. A while loop is a programming concept that allows you to execute a block of code repeatedly as long as a specified condition is true. Here's how it works. Condition, you start by defining a condition. This condition is like a rule that decides whether the loop should continue running or stop. Execution, the block of code inside the while loop is executed if the condition is true. If the condition is false, the code inside the loop is skipped and the program moves on to the next part of the program after the loop. Reevaluation: after the block of code inside the loop is executed, the condition is checked again. If the condition is still true, the block of code inside the loop is executed again. This process continues until the condition becomes false. A list is a versatile collection of items that allows you to store multiple elements of different types in a single variable. Lists are one of the built-in data structures provided by Python. In Python, you can create lists using square brackets and separating the elements with commas. Let's create a list with the name of numbers containing integers from 1 to 5. To see all the items in a list, just use the print statement followed by the name of the list. If you want to see the first item of the list, you can use the list name with the index number. Every list starts counting from zero. So, if you want to access the first item of the list, you should use zero as the index number. And if you want to view the second item of the list then you should use one as index number.
And if you want to view the last item of the list, you should use minus 1 as index number. Minus 1 always show the last item of the list, no matter how long your list is. In Python, a tuple is an immutable ordered collection of elements. This means that once a tuple is created, you cannot change its contents, add, or remove elements from it. Tuples are defined using parentheses and can contain elements of different data types, including other tuples. Here's a basic example of defining tuples. Tuples can also be created without parentheses, but it's a good practice to include them for clarity. You can add items of different data types in a tuple. We can view the items in the tuples using index number same like lists. In Python, there are many tools called string functions that help change how data looks on the screen without altering the original value stored in a variable. For instance, if you want to make text appear in capital letters, you can use the upper function. Just remember to use the print function to display the result on the screen. Similarly, if you want the text to appear in small letters, you can use the lower function. 